Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and in this video I'm going to do a full setup video for the AT&T Air home internet. Um, I want to make this clear in case you're new to this. This isn't like a modem where you're getting fiber or cable into your house. This is basically a glorified mobile hotspot. It's run off cellular towers. I don't think people really use hotspots because everyone just uses their phone now. They seem to be fine for it. What this is is basically just a constant cellular connection to AT&T's tower, but it's designed you can you know connect anything like a regular internet service, your phone, TV, printer, because it is basically a router built into this. There's no wires aside from the power cable and if you want to run Ethernet into it. So with that being said, I didn't really see any videos that were first person real. They were just like AI videos of setting it up. So hopefully I can make a decent video here. I've, I have T-Mobile Home Internet. I got it about three and a half years ago. It was a, a kind of hard setup process. I mean, I did it, but it, I think some things hung me up and it took a while to make the video. This one, there's basically nothing to it. It looks like all you're going to do is scan the QR code to download the AT&T app where you'll do the setup process through. And I would also like to mention that I've never been an AT&T customer before. So when I purchased this, I had to make an account. So I would assume you would have to have an account when you download the app to get started. But I don't see how you would even get this without having an AT&T account. And then on the back, which I've covered up, uh, it'll have a QR code that I think that is what it will pair with the app. So this is the QR code for the to download the app. I believe this is the QR code specific to this device that'll pair it. So we'll, we'll tackle that when we get to it, but I just wanted you to see uh, this is all there is to it. And I'm going to do this with my iPad because I'm recording with my phone, so hopefully that'll work. And you may notice some jump cuts or something if I have to cut some personal information out or just if there's something I get confused on. I want this to be in real time, so it's kind of like hopefully my experience replicates yours, so maybe it'll be a little easier if there is anything I run into that's problematic, then you'll see it and then... As the video progresses, you'll know how to solve that. So I'm going to go ahead, plug this in, and then we'll get started with the uh, app. Okay, so I've plugged the gateway in, and I'm going to go ahead and scan the app, which is going to open up down here. It prompts you to their website, which I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to get to download the actual app for this. I'm not sure if it's again because I'm on my iPad, but if it does it on your phone or whatever, just go ahead at least for iOS and download the AT and my AT&T app. And you can see here again my AT&T instead of going through the web browser, which I, I believe you can do it that way too, but I just want to do it this way. We'll allow the notifications. I'll go ahead and type my information in off camera. So after going on the website, and it's kind of hard to find stuff directly on their website, you have to specifically look for the uh, internet air service, not the ones they advertise like the fiber and everything. You need this app to set up the uh, router. So I don't know why the QR code takes you to their My at and app when you need the smart home manager app. I just don't understand that. And it's like I'm working in reverse because it already said it was activated anyway, but I obviously want the app to control the device because I want to change the SSID and some features and see what all can be accessible through the app. But I'm hoping your process is more simple than this. I don't know why it wasn't as simple as scan the code, download the specific app to set it up, and then scan the QR code on this. That's all I thought it would work. I don't know why it's being weird, but I'm going to make a video on it anyway. So once you install the Smart Home Manager app, there's a sign-in and a setup equipment. I'm going to do the sign-in first. Okay, so I want to come back with my next update. Don't do sign-in first because it'll bring up your account, but it just kept saying it was like signing in. It didn't do anything. That said, they're updating my Wi-Fi network, which I haven't even connected to the gateway yet. So I'm going to say to go ahead and hit set up equipment first. And right now I want to talk about the next step, which I'm not going to show on camera. 
So on the back of this, there's a QR code right here. You're going to scan that. You're going to have to allow the permission for the app to access your camera. You're going to scan that QR code, and then it has your personal information, like your Wi-Fi sign-in, which that can be changed later. But we need to access that QR code. I'm going to do that next, and then I will come back once it should be in the pairing process. Okay, so I've been doing everything as someone that's been tinkering around with electronics for decades uh, I did basically what I would think. I tried to sign in. I tried to set up the equipment. It didn't work. When I went to set up the equipment, it said scan the QR code. The QR code, it, it, would, it was on the uh, camera. It wouldn't pick it. So then it allows you to type in the serial number. The serial number is located right here on the sticker. It did that and it said device has already been activated, which I mentioned earlier. It seemed like it activated itself. Um, so I had to sign into it, and your Wi-Fi SSID is here, and then this is your password. This can be probably changed in the manager app. And once I connected to it, uh, it goes on the internet. So if I go up here, and let's hit uh, Amazon or something, or Google, you can see it loads in instantly, so it, there, it is connected. So let's see here if it'll, I might have to refresh the app because I should be online because I'm now connected to this. I don't know why it was so weird. So I'll probably just have to restart the app here. And app shortcuts but I don't need if you go to my Wi-Fi it just brings up your SSID which is your network name and your password you can change that so I'm gonna do that off camera I'll change it to something aside from a bunch of gibberish to something that I will know as soon as I see it and I'll put in a decent password that I don't think anyone will guess um, well there's a speed test we might check that here I, I just played around here the this just has your service information like basically your address and account number I just don't see much here if I go into here it just has a serial number I don't see much here to do I, I just don't understand why this works the way it does let's go ahead and try a speed test though It's not even in an ideal location here. I don't know why it's taking so long. The regular speed test website shows it as it's occurring. The downloads. I will say the downloads are phenomenal. That is what I get on T-Mobile in the middle of the night with good four to five bars. So this is in a non-ideal location and it's already doing outperforming that so um, now the the um, upload there was pretty good too I truly just don't understand how this setup even worked it nothing went the way I thought it should have worked um, the I would think you would scan the QR code and it would download the app to set the device up but it, it has you download your account app which is like to pay for the service and add services, you have to download the Smart Home Manager app to then set the device up. But in the amount of time it took, a few minutes, it already activated itself. So just by plugging it in, it seemed to activate itself. And then you couldn't do the activation because it said it was already activated. So then you basically just had to use your common sense, I guess, to know that you had to connect whatever device you're using this. You need to connect to your Wi-Fi, type in the password for that Wi-Fi, and then once you're signed in to the and using this internet, then you can use the app to uh, manage it, but there's really nothing in here to do. It's already set up. You can presumably change the SSID, and you can block devices. I only have this connected. Um, I'm going to try one last thing before I close the videos. I'm going to 
uh, access this on the web browser because I think I did see a something on the website or something. Maybe it was on the device itself. It said if you log into it, then you can access the uh, in more advanced settings. But if that's the case, then this was all basically useless. You basically just plug it in, it activates itself, and then you just connect to it with the uh, password on the back. So if you're already an AT&T customer, you, you would have your account, you would have separate from this anyway. So as far as I can tell, there's no setup. It just automatically set itself up. So I am really sorry if this video wasn't helpful. QR codes, none of this was helpful to me, so I tried to pass it on and it just didn't work the way I wanted. I am really curious um, for other people out there, does it just set itself up on its own? I don't know. So if you check the back of this, this is the address on your local network to get to this. And it says for advanced device configuration. So it seems to me the app is basically useless if it if you don't need the app to set it up, then I don't know why you wouldn't just use the browser version. For the remainder of this video, I just want to show some of the settings that you can do with this. I haven't really explored the app much. It does seem like there's not much you can do on it other than change your SSID. But if you look up top, this is the uh, address for your local network. So this is probably going to be the same address for anyone watching, just go whatever the um, label says, but it should look something like this. It might be a little different, but that's what mine is. You have to be connected to this internet. You can't be on a different network to do this. So you have to be connected to the gateway and then on any device that has a browser, type in that uh, URL or IP address, I guess, to access the more advanced settings why these aren't available in the app, I, I would assume they just don't want the average person to get into here and mess with this stuff unless you know what you're doing. I don't know that much about it. Um, so you can look here. It doesn't appear that it's any 6 gigahertz, so it is just uh, a Wi-Fi 6 uh, protocol, which is fine. This does appear to have a bridge mode, or I think you can turn off the NAT and firewall so you can connect a separate router to do all that and shouldn't have um, NAT issues like you would with the T-Mobile. I don't know too much on that, so I don't want to say too much. And if you're watching this video, this probably isn't something you're interested in. If you are, you probably already know how to configure this, but I just want to show that this is available here. Uh, the majority of everything here is personal information that I don't want to show. Uh, but if I go to firewall, you can see here that it does have a NAT on, but there's there's different things with ports that I think you can change. And I saw stuff about packet size, because I know if the T-Mobile one, I think they use a different packet size and they recommend you change it. But it looks like on here, there are things that you can do. Like here you have NAT settings, IP settings, and then firewall. This is stuff that I don't understand anything about. Uh, I'll have to look up how that works, but I just wanted to show that there there are advanced settings with this and you have to access them through the browser login. There's a little bit of lag, like you get this please wait prompt. So that's kind of annoying, but this isn't probably something you're gonna be in a thousand times. You'll probably spend an hour in it when you set it up if you're into that and probably be close to being done with it. And let me go ahead and do a speed test put me on a server a little further away here but the speeds let's see what I'm... so I'm only getting two out of four bars on the device just on my desk here so that's actually really it's bouncing between two and three what I'm going to do is probably take it outside and hopefully that would be the most ideal until I find out where my local tower is I might drive to that tower and see what the theoretical speed at the tower would be, but it's still gonna be lower priority being home internet. Change to a closer one here. I don't know if it'll be any better. No, it's about the same, they're a little worse. Usually when you deviate from what the default uh, server is that it picks, it's a little worse. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there for now. 
Hopefully there was something salvageable about this video. Uh, please let me know how your setup works. Uh, I would recommend watching this video before you get the service. So that way you go in knowing you might not even have to do anything. You might just plug it in, give it five minutes, and it'll activate itself. If not, skip the AT&T app. Just go ahead and do the Smart Home Manager app. And then you should be able to either scan the QR code or type in the uh, serial number, and it should activate that otherwise. That's about all that app is good for as far as I'm concerned. If you want any more advanced settings, just go ahead and access the browser settings for this and it seems to be that's where you want to go to do any of that so i hope that helped in some way and at least you can see that i kind of ran into a bunch of issues that wasn't as streamlined as i had hoped if they had just kind of put a paper and then it says leave it plugged in for five minutes it'll likely activate itself otherwise download this app and yeah that would have been a little bit better so i don't know why that was but uh please let me know what your experience was like and if there was anything in this that helped you Thanks for watching, and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.